a humble housekeeper graciously stood up for an elderly man at the supermarket. Covering the cost of his groceries. Little did she anticipate that the following day would bring an unexpected phone call. Leaving her in shock. The bustling supermarket was alive with the hurried movements of people. Trolleys weaving through aisles. And shelves adorned with a vibrant array of products that I in the midst of this bustling scene. Mary. A modest 50-year-old woman. Found herself in the meat department. Her cart was filled with packets of sausages and an abundance of rice. A testament to her daily efforts to provide at least the basics. While those around her selected various items. Mary's thoughts carried a melancholic tune. Reflecting on her meager housekeeping salary that I wish I could afford something more for my grandson to eat. This is too challenging. Mary sighed. Surveying the limited options before her. Her somber expression and worn-out clothes mirrored the harsh reality she faced. Frustration mounted as she picked up the sausages. The affordable choice. Ready to depart with the disappointment of not being able to provide more nutritious food for her grandson. Viney. Who eagerly awaited her return at home, the most disheartening moment occurred when Mary observed other shoppers' carts brimming with the variety she desired, beans. Vegetables and even less healthy but delightful products like cookies, snacks, cakes, and coffee. All these were luxuries beyond her reach with the meager salary she earned as a housekeeper. The market's atmosphere only intensified her sadness how I wish I could buy some meat. God. He'd love some chocolate milk for breakfast. Mary dreamed her aspirations sharply contrasting with the harsh reality she faced. As she reached the checkout, the housekeeper, lost in her thoughts, unwittingly stood in the preferential line. An elderly man approached her with a modest basket containing a few items. Oh, I'm sorry. You can go ahead. Sir. Mary graciously offered. Realizing he had priority. She showed her politeness, allowing him to go first. However, as the cashier began to ring up the man's products, he discovered he had forgotten his wallet. Visibly upset, the poor man searched through his pockets, expressing his concern. Oh no, I forgot my wallet. Where is my wallet? How am I going to pay for it now? The old man lamented turning from side to side in a state of worry. The cashier, not understanding the elderly man's situation, began to humiliate him with harsh words. Do you think we're idiots? You're not going to scam us if you don't have any money. The cashier uttered, creating an embarrassing scene. The young woman displayed extreme rudeness toward the old man in an already awkward situation. Despite the man's attempts to explain himself, citing his forgetfulness due to his dirty and torn clothes, the cashier found it challenging to believe his honesty. Further intensifying the embarrassment, you must be a beggar who doesn't even have any money. Look at you. Come on. Pay if you can. If not, leave the poor man with just a packet of crackers. Some yogurt and a bag of flour. The cashier's suspicion targeted the elderly man. Despite his modest purchases, the atmosphere was tense. Mary, observing the lack of respect in the cashier's treatment, couldn't hold back and decided to intervene. Expressing her revolt. Don't you have any shame? Young lady. He's elderly. You should respect him. He said he'd forgotten his wallet. You can't humiliate him. Mary exclaimed. Trying to make the young woman aware of the delicate situation. However. The supermarket cashier's response was even harsher, shut up. 2. You old woman. Who do you think you are? The old man. Discouraged by his humiliation. Suggested he'd come back another time. No. It's okay. I can come back another day when I have found my wallet. 
he said, clearly saddened. At that moment, his stomach rumbled loudly, revealing the hunger that tormented him. Everyone heard it. He was about to leave when Mary, compassionate, stopped him, wait. Sir, I'll pay for your groceries, said the housekeeper, determined to make a difference. The man was surprised by the unexpected gesture. Mary then took some of her own groceries out of her trolley, generously passing the man's goods along with hers at the checkout and paid. The employee kept her mouth shut. Embarrassed. As for the old man. His eyes were shining with emotion that am why dear. Thank you so. So much. I haven't eaten for two days. He said. Almost crying. Expressing his gratitude. Mary. Despite her worries about providing a more substantial meal for her grandson. Felt happy to have helped the old man at that moment. However. She still made a point of lecturing the cashier. Pointing out her ridiculous and disrespectful attitude you should be ashamed of yourself. You didn't even care about this man's condition. Whether he was hungry or not. And you simply humiliated him. I hope the market disciplines you. She asserted as she walked away. Outside the store. She and the poor old man had a chat, the housekeeper contemplated the need to do more work the next day since she had paid for the man's things. She had to leave almost half of her groceries. And now the food would only be enough for her grandson that I'll have to work more tomorrow. Then I'll be able to buy some more food so I can eat too tonight. I can go to sleep without eating. Mary thought that Mary's life was a web of suffering and deprivation. After losing her daughter and son-in-law in a tragic accident, she found herself the sole guardian of Vinny, a little boy of just six years old. The tears that this poor woman cried in secret were silent witnesses to the pain she carried. As a housekeeper with a precarious life and earning a tiny amount each day, the money she earned was barely enough to buy the basics of daily life. This resulted in a repetitive diet of only sausage and rice. The cheaper options, the daily struggle to support Vinny was a battle against poverty. A struggle to offer her grandchild at least one meal a day. However, the grandmother's sadness reached an arduous point when the little one returned from school reporting that he had seen other children enjoying simple luxuries such as snacks and cookies, they make fun of me because I only bring rice and sausage to school. Grandma, said the boy, his words full of discouragement. Mary cried when she was alone. Lamenting the impossibility of giving her grandson a more dignified life all I wanted was to be able to give him a better life. That's all. She thought in the darkness of her room at night. On that particular day. After making the kind gesture of paying for the elderly man's groceries. The housekeeper's frustration reached a painful mark. Despite having performed an act of kindness helping someone who was hungry. She was faced with the cruel reality that she had only secured Vinny's portion. She wasn't going to eat that day. And she knew she would have to sleep without eating. Face a tiring day at work the next day without food. And then repeat the rice and sausage ritual in the evening that I'm going to make it. Mary said to herself. Looking for the strength to keep going. It was a mantra that echoed in her mind. A reminder that she couldn't allow herself to weaken in the face of the relentless adversity that life threw at her. Waking up with the sun. The woman did everything as usual. She heated up the leftovers for Vinny to take to school. Packed his lunchbox. And set off for another day. However. Something extraordinary awaited her on her journey. Something that would change her poor life forever. After taking her grandson to school, Mary went to work. Faced with hunger and weakness, she cleaned every corner of her employer's house. Her thoughts a whirlwind of worries. And her hunger throbbing. Oh Lord. I'm so hungry. Will I faint? I can't faint. I have to clean everything or they won't pay me. 
The uncertainty about her ability to complete the day's tasks hung over her mind, for Vinny. I can do it. She motivated herself. Seeking the strength to carry on. However. It was obvious that the housekeeper's performance was not the same. Mary faced the anger of her boss. Who didn't mince words in expressing her dissatisfaction, look at those drawers. Mary. It's filthy. And those pans. Didn't I tell you to scrub everything and make it shine? Isn't that what I pay you for? Or do you want to lose your job? I'm sorry. Ma'am. I'll clean again. Said the poor woman. As the day dragged on. Lunchtime approached. And it was going to be the worst time of all. Her bosses wouldn't share their food with her. Claiming they paid her enough so she could buy her own. As her hunger intensified. Mary found it impossible to remain in the same room with that wonderful smell of a nice lunch, since she had neither lunch nor the money to buy any. The cleaner decided to spend her break outside in the garden. At least here I can distract myself and try not to think about food. She muttered. Her mind. Contrary to what she wanted. Was invaded by frustrating thoughts about her life. Her grandchild. And the sad reality of only eating sausage and rice every day that I in the midst of this bleak scenario. Something unexpected happened, Mary's phone rang. Displaying an unknown number. Who could that be? She didn't usually answer many calls. But her curiosity made her want to know who was calling. She picked up the phone. And on the other end of the line. A male voice revealed itself, good morning. Is this Mary Green, yes. It's me. Who is this? She asked. Intrigued, yesterday you paid for a man's groceries at the supermarket. Right. Said the man. Making the housekeeper feel uneasy. Before continuing with the story. We want to know what you would do if you received a strange call like that. Let us know in the comments. Now back to the story that it was then that the man introduced himself as Roger Freeman and explained that the old man at the supermarket was his father. Mary was shocked. How could that old man's son have gotten her phone number? And what did he want, are you free now? Mary. I'd like to meet you for lunch. I'd like to talk to you. Can I send a car to pick you up? Asked the insistent Roger. The kind man's offer of a free lunch was tempting for the simple housekeeper. Who was on the verge of collapse. Especially in that moment of intense hunger. Accepting the invitation. It wasn't long before she saw a dazzling black car pull up in front of her employer's house, a limousine. The woman was stunned. But the surprises didn't stop there, upon arriving at the restaurant. The place was phenomenal. Luxurious. And there was the old man. Beaming with joy. With his son who welcomed Mary with a warm smile, see. It's her. I told you it was her. The gentleman exclaimed as she approached. Amid the confusion and surprise. Roger Freeman formally introduced himself. Revealing that the man. His father. Was Albert Freeman. The man she had helped at the supermarket that I really wanted to thank you for the way you treated my father yesterday. Defending him from that heartless and rude employee. You didn't have to pay for his purchase either. And you still did it. Thank the old man's son. Even more shocking. Roger was the owner of one of the largest cleaning products companies in the country, Mary. Incredulous. Could hardly believe that the humble. Shabby man she had helped at the market was the father of someone so powerful, but what am I really doing here? Mr. Freeman. Asked the woman. Visibly confused by this unexpected turn of events, the millionaire explained that Albert suffered from a mental illness and had been treated in a specialized nursing home for some time. Roger. A very busy businessman. Couldn't take care of his father himself. Despite being a very present son in the old man's life. Visiting him whenever he could at the nursing home. However. The old man always managed to escape from the place. 
which had already happened a couple of times. And his son was very worried this time. Albert spent two days on the streets. Which is why he was so hungry at the market. The man was found thanks to the efforts of the men Roger hired to locate him. When he was rescued, Albert shared the story of the generous woman who had paid for his food. Even though she had to sacrifice part of her own purchases. And who defended him against the disrespectful attitude of the cashier that I want to see her again. Son. I want to thank her properly. Said the old man. Briefly in a state of lucidity. Moved by Mary's kindness. The businessman decided to reward her. Not just with a cash reward. He wanted to offer her more that I wanted to offer you a job if you're interested. Said the man. Revealing his intention to make Mary his father's caregiver that he seemed to really appreciate your kindness. And it's people like that I'd like him to have around. My father doesn't want to go back to the nursing home anymore. So we want to hire someone to look after him at home. But he demanded that it be you. Roger offered. Not only the job but also all the courses necessary for Mary to become a specialized nurse. I'll pay for all the elderly care courses you need. And you'll get all the help you need. The salary offered was significantly better than what she received as a housekeeper. Equivalent to five minimum wages. The woman. Incredulous at this extraordinary offer. Couldn't hold back her tears. It was the miracle she had always hoped for. The opportunity her heart had longed for that I accept. Of course. I accept. Replied Mary. Expressing her gratitude and excitement at the prospect of such a transformative change in her life. Why God. I'm going to be able to give Vinny a better life. I can't believe it. The housekeeper thought to herself as she hugged the old man. Emotional and grateful. The old man was overjoyed. Almost jumping with joy. The promise of dedicated and loving care for his father eased the worries of the millionaire who now saw Albert in good hands after accepting the job. Mary never went back to her unbearable boss's house. With the check Roger had given her as an initial reward. The woman went to the supermarket and made a purchase she never thought she would make one day. She bought everything her heart desired and only wanted to see Vinny's face when he got home, when the little boy saw all those bags filled with all kinds of food. Including his dream chocolate milk and cookies. He jumped for joy, Grandma. Grandma. We're rich. Look at all this food. The woman let tears of joy run down her face as she and her grandson excitedly put away the groceries. Filling up the pantry, the next day. The sun shone differently for that hardworking woman. There began a journey of transformation in her life. Her determination drove her to learn everything she needed to become a qualified caregiver for Albert. She attended courses on caring for the elderly. Especially those with special conditions. Absorbing all the knowledge and developing the skills essential for this new phase in her life throughout this process. A very special bond of friendship blossomed between Mary and the old man. They weren't just caregiver and patient. They became friends. They shared laughter. Stories. And. Above all companionship for him the woman became like a daughter bringing comfort and joy to his days this new job offered her grandson Vinny a more comfortable life and mary felt fulfilled she could now offer her little one everything that had previously seemed like a distant dream his lunchbox was always full of goodies and the sight of him going to school with a beaming smile was a daily reward for his grandmother trips to the supermarket were no longer limited to packets of sausages and rice. Now she could fill her trolley with a variety of foods. Something that filled her with joy. And so. The story of that simple housekeeper who became a professional elderly caregiver ends with a happy ending where empathy. Kindness. And perseverance turned into a new life full of possibilities, the daily life of this hard-working woman was marked by moments of joy. Solidarity. And fulfillment. 
If you liked this story. I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story, now. Let's move on to the next story, Charles Evans boarded the bus leaning on his cane. Unfortunately not as easy and graceful as he would have liked. His back pain had become increasingly frequent. Turning the elderly man's life into sheer agony. In his younger years. Charles had taken part in armed conflict in the jungles of Indochina. As a memento of those times. The veteran received the Purple Heart Medal. As well as a lower back injury that grew more pronounced with each passing year, having entered the bus. Charles paid the fare and decided to take an empty seat by the window. At that moment. The shoelace of his shoe came undone. Causing him to stumble and nearly fall into the aisle. Mr. Evans winced. But he couldn't change the situation. The pain in his lower back prevented him from bending over. So he had to pretend that nothing out of the ordinary had happened to Mar. Evans had long grown accustomed to the fact that the consequences of his injury hindered his daily life. However. There was no point in dwelling on the past. As it couldn't be changed. As he looked at the untied shoelace. Charles shook his head and closed his eyes wearily. At that moment. He was unaware that a lovely young woman was observing him attentively. The stranger was seated opposite the elderly veteran and immediately noticed the untied shoelace on his shoe. Seizing the moment when the bus stopped at a traffic light. The woman approached Mr. Evans. She kneeled right down before him and quickly tied his shoelaces. The elderly man's cheeks flushed with embarrassment, you shouldn't have done that. I could have managed on my own. Even if not so easily as you. The stranger smiled in response and replied with a barely noticeable eastern accent. No need to thank me. Sir. Anyone would have done the same thing in my place to Mar. Evans looked at the woman with undisguised respect and felt a sense of pride that such kind people lived in this city. Since he had a few more stops to go. He asked the woman a couple of unobtrusive questions. As the conversation revealed. The woman's name was Amina. She had recently moved to the United States with her fiancé and had not fully adapted to her new life. Amina came from one of the countries in the Middle East and dreamed of a life in New York which was always the city of her dreams to Mar. Evans nodded understandingly. He knew that it was always challenging for newcomers to adapt to life in the metropolis. Especially if they grew up in another country. When the bus approached Mr. Evans's stop, he attempted to get up too abruptly, causing him to groan from the pain in his back, let me help you. Here. Take my hand. That's it. Slowly. Amina commanded. Tears welled up in the eyes of the elderly man. Meanwhile. Amina helped the old man get off the bus. Not forgetting his small bag with the modest assortment of groceries, but what about you? This isn't your stop. Is it? Mr. Evans asked somewhat embarrassed. Amina smiled. Don't worry. I'll take a little walk and help you. In the meantime. I only need to go two stops further. I'm looking for a J.O.B. Dunmar. Evans perked up, are you having problems with that? Maybe there's something I can help with. Amina looked at her elderly companion and then replied that I don't think you can help me. Sir. The thing is. My fiancé got injured while working at the construction site. So he's undergoing treatment right now. The doctors say it will take him over a month to recover. And no one wants to hire me because I'm a foreigner and don't have any experience, Charles started thinking. His story stirred feelings in his heart that he never even knew existed. To be honest. He felt sorry for the young woman who was trying her best to survive in an unfamiliar city. Charles couldn't have children on his own. Medical examinations and treatments had yielded no results. Charles and his wife even thought about adopting a child. 
but something always got in the way of Imar. Evan smiled and looked at Amina, who was supporting him by the elbow, firmly decided to help the young woman. As they were passing by a fast food restaurant, the elderly veteran stopped and asked his companion to wait for him at the entrance that he opened the door and found himself in a comfortably air-conditioned room filled with the pleasant aroma of various spices and food additives. Shuffling the soles of his worn-out shoes, the old man passed through the dining area and arrived at the door marked dot manager. Charles hesitated for a moment and then knocked three times. Having heard the loud dot come in, he turned the doorknob, the manager's office was cozy. With soft music playing. For a moment. Charles felt like he was at home. Looking at the elderly man seated at the table. Mr. Evans said that I'm glad to see you again. Master Sergeant, the manager tore his gaze away from the papers on the table and smiled at his guest, Charles. Is that really you? How many years has it been? Man. Three. Five. Did you completely forget about me? Remember how tough it was in the Mong Valley Damar? Evans nodded. Indicating to his former brother-in-arms that he had come for a specific reason that you've known me for many years. John. I rarely ask you for any favors. But now I need your help. Charles began, what can I do for you? Corporal John Simpson asked with interest. Charles approached the table and leaned over to the veteran sitting there. He quickly explained the essence of the matter. By the way the manager's face changed. It was clear that Charles's proposal had struck a chord with him. In conclusion, Mr. Evans added that I take full responsibility and personally vouch for this woman, all right. Charles. Tell her to come in. I'll be happy to help you and your friend. John Simpson. The former master sergeant. Replied. When Mr. Evans left the cafe. Amina was waiting for him at the entrance. Looking somewhat bored. Little did she know that just a few minutes ago. This elderly man had solved her employment issue, well. Amina. I think congratulations are in order. I got you a job as a waitress in this cafe. And its owner is my old army buddy. With whom we went through thick and thin in the jungles of Indochina. Charles said. Shaking the woman's hand. Amina's face literally lit up with happiness. Mr. Evans's gesture touched her deeply. After thanking the veteran for his help, Amina assisted him in getting home and then hurried back to the Café de Mar. Evans stood on the porch of his home for a long time, watching the woman leave. His gaze seemed distant, as if he were contemplating something related to his past. Several years passed during which Charles Evans didn't see Amina again. With each passing year, it became increasingly difficult for the elderly man to venture into the city. So he relied more and more on home deliveries of groceries and medication, but it wasn't just this that soured Mr. Evans's life. His beloved wife, Charlotte, fell seriously ill. The situation was very complicated because she hadn't sought medical attention in time, significantly worsening her condition. Only after Charlotte underwent a complete medical checkup did the doctors diagnose her with a severe illness. It was by no means a death sentence. But given her advanced age, there was a risk that Mrs. Evans might not withstand the surgery. At 75 years old, the strain on the body was particularly high, Charlotte had long come to terms with the bleak verdict of the doctors and didn't want to dwell on it. But Charles continued to search for a solution to their predicament with unwavering determination. He knew that the cost of the operation was substantial. And gathering the necessary funds was far from simple. Desperate. Mr. Evans decided to take out a loan from a bank. If they would approve it. Of course. The elderly veteran simply had no other choice especially since his military background taught him to always fight to the end. However, Mr. Evans had barely walked a hundred yards from his home when an expensive SUV pulled up next to him. 
He looked at the car wearily and continued on his way. Leaning on his walking stick. But when the door of the Ford swung open and a familiar voice called out to him. His heart swelled with joy. The owners of the SUV turned out to be Amina and her husband Yusef. In the intervening years. They had done significant work and managed to change their lives for the better. Despite Amina's significantly elevated social status. She remained the same kind and compassionate woman. Upon learning of Mr. Evans's problem. She immediately offered to help but that's a lot of money. And I'm not sure when I'll be able to repay you. The elderly veteran began hesitantly. Don't worry. Sir. You don't have to pay us back at all. You've done so much for both Amina and me that we owe you everything we have. Yusef replied, tears welled up in Mr. Evans's eyes. He stood there and still couldn't believe everything that just happened. Only when Amina and Yusef transferred the money to the hospital's account did he realize that it was all real. Needless to say, Charlotte was extremely anxious on the day of the surgery. Fortunately, thanks to the professionalism of the doctors and state-of-the-art equipment, everything went well. Only now, when his wife was undergoing a lengthy rehabilitation course at one of the country's seaside resorts. Did Charles finally breathe a sigh of relief, but most importantly. Amina and Yusef started visiting the elderly couple almost every week. And they didn't come alone but with their two young sons. This allowed Charlotte and Charles to feel like real grandparents. Watching the joyful faces of their little boys. Amina and Yusef were confident that they enjoyed the company of the elderly couple, whose hearts responded to them with genuine kindness and warmth. That's all for today's story. If you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.